Hey, welcome back to the Secret Underground Lair. Today we're going to be turning these boards and some of this board into a little hallway entrance table. All right, first step in uh, taking these boards uh, and turning it into a table. These were cut into five quarter boards on the sawmill. And I'll put a little link in the, not sure if it's gonna show up there or it'll show up there. But I'll put in a little link to that uh, description where these were cut from that uh, elm table, or from that elm farm beam. So I'm gonna rip these down, right down the middle to cut them into, uh, these will be 9 sixteenths inches on either side when I'm done. Uh, then I'm going to run everything through the planer to get it down to half an inch. Then I'm going to join the boards together. So that's what, how probably how far we'll get uh, on this video is the cutting and the planing, possibly the joining. So without further ado, let's set the table up for ripping these down the middle. Okay, got the table saw set up. The blade's coming up about uh, just slightly under two inches. These boards are a little over three and a half inches wide. So uh, one pass, I'll flip the board over, make a second pass, and that'll give me a, a split right down the middle at 5 eighths. I'll do that for all three boards. And uh, we'll probably zoom through this on the video, but at least you'll know what I'm trying to do here. Before I put this through the table saw, I'm going to try and get rid of this nail that's uh, still embedded in this wood. So here's the technique that I've been using on other uh, nails that I've had like this. It's just cut off flush. There's just no way to grip it at all. Um, it's relatively close to the surface, so I might be able to just kind of make a cut and pry that out, but I'll show you what I have been doing and we'll take drastic steps if I need to. Um, I've been using a plug cutter and I use the plug cutter just to kind of go around the, sh the shaft of the nail. And I just go down maybe a quarter of an inch or so and then I uh, can rip the wood out from around the nail and that gives me frequently enough uh, room to get in there with a pair of ice grips, for example, and grip the head of the nail and just start pulling it out that way. So I'm going to try doing that with this one and we'll see how, how well we do. This being so close to the surface, it might be easier just to uh, uh, make a little cut there and, and push it out the side. This is always the challenge, is getting this thing started. Oh, well, there you are. How about that? There wasn't much left of that nail at all. <laughs> That's it. And it just came uh, flying out the side. So job done. I didn't need to make a plug. You can see that it is a little challenging when the plug is right close to the edge. If it's more in the center of the wood, it's a little bit easier to make that work. Uh, but anyway, that's a technique I have used. Didn't really work on this piece. And that's such a short little bit of nail. I'm glad. All right, we'll rip this down now.
All right, so that's given me a fair bit of elm. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to get uh, two tabletops out of this. Uh, these are going to be little uh, uh, D-shaped uh, tabletops. Uh, I, if things have gone well, you will have seen a, a picture of the finished table by now. Uh, so that's going to be uh, two. I'll get uh, two tops and the bottom out of this. And I have another piece of elm that actually came from a, a barn board, a side of a barn that I'll run through the planer and we'll see what kind of material we get out of that. This uh, piece does have lots of interesting character marks from that beetle. Doesn't matter where I cut, there's always marks uh, in this beam. It's really quite remarkable how, how deep that bug went, or those bugs, uh, multiples of them. So uh, we'll set up to the planer now and start ripping through some of that material. So the first bit of material that I'm going to be putting through the surface planer is a piece of barn board. Uh, it looks pretty rough on the outside. In fact, this people kind of kind of craved this for a look on some walls. But I have uh, a couple small pieces of this, uh, not really suitable for much, but it'll be exactly what I'm looking for for this uh, furniture piece. It is elm. It's not pine, uh, so it's going to be okay. It'll match nicely. And I have plans in the next couple weeks to go get a bunch more of this stuff, so I'm not worried about it. So let's run this through. Hearing protection for this one, it's loud and I'll likely have the uh, volume turned way down and maybe some music or something while this process goes on. Having some second thoughts about uh, running the thin stuff through the uh, thickness plater right now. Uh, what I'm thinking would probably make more sense to do would be to glue the top together. It's only going to be 12 inches wide, so the finished piece will go through the, the planer here. This can support 12 inches of width. So, um, yeah, change of approach. I'm going to glue those together and then run the finished bits through the planer. So back when I'm ready to glue everything up. So just made a happy discovery. Uh, I'm glad I'm gluing this up before um, planing everything and and, uh, and cutting out the D-shaped top because by clever gluing I can actually get two pieces a top and bottom out of these four uh, simply by making offsetting the pieces a bit like this. So my first D shape will be here and my second D shape comes around here and by offsetting, this is the line here, so by offsetting these pieces I get uh, two full uh, D shape pieces for the top and bottom of the table. If I had just glued them together square, I would not be able to do that. So, Hence the uh, lines that I've drawn here are to help me align the pieces as they glue up. So that'll be the next step, just putting some glue on there and getting these bits glued. I'll be back, I'll set up the camera and we'll get that done. Alright, got a lot of stuff laid out here for this glue up. So clamps to hold all the boards together as they're being glued. I got a couple braces here uh, that I'll be putting on to keep the boards from separating and keep them in proper plane. I've got some wedges because not everything here is exactly uh, the right thickness so these will help keep the boards uh, flat against uh, the underside. And uh, yeah, I think I'm ready to uh, I think I'm ready to go. Just gotta figure out where to put all the clamps while like, I glue them together or glue the boards up.
All right, there we are, we're glued. Um, it turns out I didn't really need those um, uh, braces. I think we're, we're gonna be just fine as is. There's a little bit of unevenness, but like I said, all this is gonna go through the uh, surface planer to even up everything once uh, it's all glued together and, we're, and we cut them into rough shape. <clears throat> Very happy to have discovered that doing this little offset glue up will give me a top and bottom. I have enough material now from that elm beam that I can make a second table. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. I, I was wanting to make two. And I don't have to use the uh, barn board um, that I was originally intending to use. Although it's possible I might use those for the legs or use that for the leg material. Anyway, got time to figure that out. So let this uh, set up and come back when we're ready to make something out of it. The radar piece has had a chance to set, so we'll take off the clamps. Let's see what we've got. Overall, I'm quite pleased with that result. <clears throat> Just get rid of some of these uh, glue blobs. So the next question is, uh, cut the pieces and run them through the surface planer. Or should I just do this entire piece on the bed rail router sled? And <clears throat> what I'm looking to do is to get one side uh, flat and then when I do cut it, then I can run this through, um, this side through on the surface planer. And I know that I'm going to get a, I have a nice flat surface underneath. So that's, that's what I'm considering at the moment is what side is going to be the quickest, or what way is going to be the quickest to give me a nice flat surface. Belt sander would do a good job, but it'll wind up being a little bit wavy. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking that I might use the bed, bed rail router sled just to kind of even that up a little bit. There's not a lot to take off, so it might be worth it just to use that tool. Okay, I'll set up when I'm ready. I'll come back when I'm ready and have that uh, set up. All right, I have <clears throat> the piece mounted in the uh, bed rail router sled. And it just went through a little exercise <clears throat> of getting it leveled up. What I want to make sure is that the piece is as parallel to the rails as possible. So I just have a scrap piece of wood and I put it here and marked a line where I want, where this piece is sitting relative to the rail. And then I've gone through and made sure that that is, that line is consistent across the whole piece. So on our four corners, I'm going to be, I'm exactly where I want to be. And I know that through the middle here, I'm going to be taking out some material. Here I can see I'll be taking out about a sixteenth of an inch off this section. Uh, but at least I have everything now where I want it to be. I have used some shims. You can see a shim here just to kind of prop that side up. And I've actually screwed it down uh, onto the table. Um, so those screws are embedded in about uh, maybe 330 seconds. So. I'll just need to be aware of those if I'm getting close. But the first pass is just going to be kissing the top of this section here, which is at its, uh, my line. So that'll take care of most of this section. And then we'll probably go down a 30 second from there, a 30 second at a time, just to see how we are progressing. <clears throat> I have a sacrificial board here. Uh, so my clamps, uh, clamp here, and then the opposing block here, pin. So this, this will be sacrificial. <clears throat> if you see me diving into that and leaving it a mess, don't worry, that's in, its intended purpose. All right, let me uh, get the router put on and away we go. 
Okay, your rotor is all set up. I'm putting on some hearing protection for this job. Um, just going to be taking a little skim off this. It'll probably get a little bit deeper over here. Uh, it is a new bit. Um, and I don't have dust collection on the, uh, on the rotor sled yet. Uh, I'm probably going to want to do that real quick though. So let me uh, fire up and we'll get rolling. All right, I'm very happy with that. Probably took off a little more than I wanted to, but overall I think we're good. And now we have a nice uh, flat surface here. And if I choose to uh, do anything more with the surface planer, I can do that. A few character marks here. Boy, some real uh, heavy paths for a, some beetle work in there. All right. I think now I can cut these pieces the way that I want them. So I'll flip it over and we'll go to the bandsaw and cut them out. Do a little bit of clean up here with the anaconda first. Okay, so there's our piece uh, released from the rotor sled. And just kind of going in for a closer look. Quite pleased with the way that turned out. It's a very smooth finish. There's not any rotor bit uh, marks on except at the very beginning where I was going back and forth laterally this way uh, That did leave a few marks. It does work much better when I run with the grain Which is what I did for the rest of the piece And here you can see some of the uh, remnants of this beetle uh, Activity As well as a bunch of other marks you know, around here Just lots and lots of character and it's all through the piece, so it doesn't matter where you go, uh, you can find it. Here's some more stuff way down at this end. Um, yeah. But it's, it's all interesting. I'm not worried about that. I, I kind of like it. it. It just makes the piece a little bit more interesting. So <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing now on the bandsaw is cutting out a circle here and cutting out a semicircle here. And that'll give us the... Uh, top and bottom of our little, what we're going to call a Julia table. All right, I'll get to the bandsaw next. I'm going to have lunch first. All right, little change of plan. Back to the uh, uh, bed rail rotor sled. And I'm going to just take off a little bit off this uh, surface before going over to the bandsaw and cutting out the shapes. It occurred to me I might as well get everything to a uniform thickness here. I think it, it's certainly faster than using the uh, surface planer. 
and um, and pleased with the results that the that the rotor will give me on on this uh, rotor slide. So I've leveled up the piece, spent a little bit of time doing that, and just going to make a very light pass uh, initially, and then we'll make another pass after that. So unfortunately, it doesn't mean a big mess, but I'm, I'll be okay. I'll get over. Okay, our first pass probably isn't going to touch this piece at all, but we'll take a little bit off these two outside edges. We're very pleased with that result. I have just a tiny little bit here uh, where there's a little bit of deflection, but I can get that out with sandpaper. So overall, we have two surfaces that are looking really good. Now I can go to the bandsaw and cut these out. Very happy with that result. But again, before I do anything else, I'm gonna get over the anaconda and get rid of this stuff. So there's our second side after running through the um, bed rail rotor sled. This is the one area where I'm slightly under, but with sandpaper I can get that out. The whole piece needs to be sanded anyway, so that'll be good. Again, just uh, more interesting little beetle marks down here. Um, you know, beetle marks all over, but more character. So I have the piece now to a, a nice uniform thickness all through, not a half inch, and now I'll remark the semicircles and cut them out on the bandsaw. So my top here is 12 inches wide, or it's going to be 12 inches wide, but I want a 14 inch radius uh, on the uh, dimension of the, of the top. So what I've done is with my little uh, board here, my uh, sacrificial board, I've measured two inches from the edge of the top to this nail hole. And I've got a hole marked here at 14 inches on the beam compass. So I line that up there. And there's my 14 inch diameter on a 12 inch wide top. 
Now we'll set up to do this mark on this side of the board. Okay, same kind of setup. I got the uh, sacrificial board put over here, two inches away from the edge. What I want to make sure is that this 14 inch hole is going to clear this piece. So far, so good. Okay, we have two semicircles marked. So first cut with the band saw will be just to rip through here to separate the two halves. Then I might actually join the two halves together and cut them at the same time. Uh, that will just make sure that I don't, uh, I, I get everything exactly the same. All right, to the band saw. All right, executive decision here. Uh, this piece won't go through the band saw the way it's uh, currently set up. That it's too uh, too wide, here, too long here. Actually, is is the problem to get through the throat. So, I'm just going to make this cut right down the middle with my circular saw, and then we'll be ready to cut these out with the band saw. Right, there we are. A couple of pieces. Good to go. Now I can just join these guys together and we can cut that out with the bandsaw. Maybe. I have to think about this for a minute because i got to get a uh, little offset thing figured out. Alright, so here's the setup. Tape it. I've got um, my circle cutting, cutting jig mounted into the bandsaw and clamped down. Our two tops are nailed together and they are put on top of a board, um, a sacrificial board, that gives me the two inch offset necessary to make this a 28 inch diameter circumference. So I'm um, going to give that a start it up. Looks like I might just be off here a little bit, but we um, get the, the uh, dust collector going, and away we away we go. So that worked out very well. Just take this all apart now. Um, I've uh, used my nail gun just to put four tacks into the two pieces to hold them together. And there's four tacks holding this bottom on. So we'll just take all those nails apart now. All right, there's our top and bottom bits. They're gonna kind of go together, kind of oriented like that. Get some legs on them, but that's uh, again coming out of a hundred year old plus beam from a uh, piece of elm out of a century old barn. So that's it for today's video. I'll continue on with the next in the next video. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.